Ursula, wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. I will, lady. And bid her come hither. Well. Troth, I think your other robata were better. No, pray thee, good maid. Well, where this? By my troth's not so good, and I warrant your cousin will say so. My cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. <laughs> <laughs> I like the new tire with an excellently, if the hair were a thought browner. And the gown's a most rare fashion of faith. I saw the Duchess of Milan's gown that they praise so. Oh, that exceeds, they say. Oh, by my troth's what a nightgown in respect of yours. Clotho gold and cuts, laced with silver, set with pearls, down sleeves, side sleeves, and a skirts round underborn with a bluish tinsel. But for a fine, quaint, graceful, and excellent fashion, yours is with ten on it. God, give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. It will be heavier soon by the weight of a man. Fie upon <laughs> the art, not ashamed. Oh, of what, lady? Of speaking honorably? Is not marriage honorable in a beggar? Is not your lord honorable without marriage? I think you'll have me say, say he who reverence a husband, and bad thinking does not rest true speaking. I'll offend nobody. Is there any harm in the heavier for a husband? None, I think, and it be the right husband and the right wife. Otherwise, tis light, not heavy. Oh, ask my lady Beatrice else, here she comes. Oh, good morrow, cuz. No, good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now do you speak in the sick tune? Oh, I am out of all other tunes, methinks. Oh, claps in the light of love that goes without a burden. Do you sing it and I'll dance it? Mm, you light of love with your heels. Then if your husband have staples enough, you shall see he lack no bar. Illegitimate construction, I scorn that with my heels. Tis almost five o'clock, <laughs> cousin. Tis time you were ready. Ah oh, by my troth, I'm exceeding ill, hey ho. Hey, for, <laughs> for a hawk, a horse, or a husband. For the letter that begins them all, H. Oh, when you be not turned Turk, there's no more sailing by the star. What means the full trout? Nothing I, but God sent everyone their heart's desire. These gloves the Count sent me are an excellent perfume. I'm stuffed, cousin, I cannot smell. Oh, <laughs> a maid am stuffed. There's goodly catching of cold. Oh, God <laughs> help me. God help me. How long have you expressed apprehension? Oh, ever since you left. Left it. Doth not my wit become me rarely? No, oh, it's not seen enough. You should wear it in your hat. Ah! Oh, by my troth, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> Get you some of this distilled uh, Cardus Benedictus <laughs> and lay it to your heart. It is the only thing for a qualm. Oh, Benedictus! Why Benedictus? You've some moral in this Benedictus. A moral? By my troth, I have no moral meaning. No, I meant plain holy thistle. You may think perchance that I think you are in love. <laughs> Nay, by our lady, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can, nor I cannot think. For if I could think my heart out of thinking that you are in love, <laughs> or that you will be in love, <laughs> or that you even can be in love. <laughs> Yet, Benedict was such another, and now he has become a man. He swore he would never marry, and now, despite his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. You know, and, and how you may be converted, I know not, but methinks you look with your eyes, as other women do. No, what pace is this thy jump keeps? That's not a false gallop. <laughs> Madam, withdraw. The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town have come fetch you to church. Help to dress me, good cause, good maid, good Ursula. some confidence with you that discerns you near. I pray you, be brief. This is a busy time. Mary, this it is, sir. <laughs> yes, in truth, it is, sir. Uh, a good one, Burgess, sir. Uh, she speaks a little off the matter. Uh, a woman, sir, and her wits are not so uh, blunt as God desire. I wish they were. But in faith, sir, as honest as the skin between her brows. Yes, I thank God every day I am as honest as anyone living. That is, a woman, and no honester than I. Comparisons are odorous, palabrous neighbor virgins. Neighbors, you are tedious. <laughs> <laughs> Why, pleases your 
your worship to say so, but we are the poor duke's officers. But if I were as tedious as a king, if I were for mine own part, I would find it in my heart to bestow it all on your <laughs> worship. All thy tediousness on me, eh? Yea, and twere a thousand pound more than tis, for I hear as good exclamation on your worship as of any man in the city. And though I be but a poor man, I am glad to hear it. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> I would fain know what you have to say. A merry sir. Our watch tonight, accepting your worship's presence, hath, ta hath taken a couple of as errant names as any in all the seats. The, she be talking, uh, uh, well, woman, you know, as, as they say, uh, when a woman is in, the witch is out. Uh, God help us, it is a world to see. Oh, uh, neighbor Fergus, uh, God is still to be worshipped. When two men ride of a horse, one must ride behind. <laughs> An honest soul in faith, sir, by my trust she is as ever broke bread. But God is to be worshipped, not all folk are alike. Alas, good neighbor. Indeed, <laughs> neighbor. <clears throat> she comes too short of you. Gifts that God gives. <laughs> I must leave you. Oh, one word more, sir. Uh, our watch, sir, hath indeed uh, uh, comprehended two auspicious persons that we would have this morning examined before your worship. Take their examination yourself and bring them before me. I am in some haste, as it may appear to you. It shall be suffocates. Have some wine ere you go. Fare thee well. My lord, my lord, my lord, my lord. They stay for you to give your daughter to her husband. I will wait on them. I am ready. Go, good partner. Go get you to Francis Seacombe. Bid him bring his pen and inkhorn to... Here. We are now to examination these men. And we must do it wisely. Oh, we will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Here's that shall drive some of these men to a non-come. Only get the learned writer to set down our excommunication and meet me over there. Come, friar, perform only to the plain form of marriage, and recount their specific duties afterwards. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady? No. To be married to her, you, friar, come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either you know of any inward impediment on why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? None, my lord. Know you any, count? I dare make his answer none. Huh. Oh, what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do not knowing what they do. How now then? Interjections? Why some be laughing, such as ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Stand me by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you, with free and unconstrained soul, give me this maid, your daughter? As freely as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back, whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing unless you may render her again. Sweet mm -hmm. prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonato. Take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She has put the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold how like a maid she blushes here. <laughs> what show of authority and truth can cunning sin cover itself with all? Comes not that blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear, all you that see her, that she were a maid? By these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an improved want. My lord, if you, in your own proof, have vanquished her resistance and made defeat of her virginity, then I know what you would say. If I have known her, you will say she did embrace me as a husband, and so extenuate the forehand sin. No, Leonata, I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to his sister showed bashful sincerity and comely love. And seemed I ever otherwise to you? Out on these seeming, I will write against it. 
<laughs> you seem to me as Diane and her orb, as chaste is the bud Eric be blown. But you are more interpreted in your blood than Venus, or those pampered animals that rage in savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Good prince, why speak you not? What should I speak? I'd stand this honor that have gone about to link my dear friend with the common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, they are spoken, and these things are true. Well, this looks not like a nuptial. True, oh God! <laughs> Leonardo, stand I here? Is this not the prince? Is this not the prince's brother? Is this base heroes? Are our eyes our own? All this is true. What of it? Let me but move one question to your daughter. And by that fatherly and kindly power you have in her, bid her answer truly. I, I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh God, defend me, how I am beset. What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not Hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? You marry that can, Hero. Hero itself can blot out Hero's virtue. What man was he talked to do yesternight out at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why, then you are no maiden! <laughs> Leonardo, I am sorry you must hear. Upon my honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her. At that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window, who hath indeed, most like a liberal villain, confessed the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. Uh, fie, fie, they are not to be named, my lord, and not to be spoken of. There is not chastity enough in language to utter them. Thus, pretty lady, I am sorry for thy much misgovernment. Oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been if half thy outward graces had been placed about the counsels of thy heart. But farewell, thou most in fear and unfair. Farewell, thou pure impiety and impious purity. For thee, a luck of all the gates of love, and on my eyelids shall conjecture hang to turn all thoughts of beauty and harm, and never shall it be more gracious. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Oh, wait, how now, cousin hero? Why forsake you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light, and smother her spirits up. How about the lady? Stand, I think. Help, uncle! I, hero, boy, hero. Uncle, Senior Benedict Friar! Oh, face, take not away your heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. Why, how now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Can she here deny the story that is written in her blood? <laughs> do not live, hero. Do not open thine eyes. For if I thought thou wouldst not quickly die, if I thought thy spirits were stronger than thy shames, myself would, on the rear wood of reproaches, strike at thy life. Grieved, I had but one. <laughs> Chide I for that, a frugal nature's friend? Why had I but one? Why had I not with charitable hand taken up some beggar's issue at my gate, who, <laughs> smirched thus, admired in infamy, I might have said, no part of this is mine. This shame derives itself from unknown loins, but mine! Mine I loved, and mine I praised, and mine I was proud on, mine so much that I myself was to myself not mine. Valuing of her, she, oh, she has fallen into a pit of ink, which the wide sea hath dropped too few to wash her clean again, and salt too little to give season to her foul, tainted flesh. Sir, sir, be patient. For myself, I am so attired in wonder, I know not what to think. On my soul, my cousin is belied. Uh, lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not. But until last night, I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Confirmed, confirmed. That has made stronger still, which was before barred up with ribs of iron. Would the princes lie? And Claudio lie, who loved her such that speaking of her foulness did wash it with tears? 
Hence from her, let her die. Hear me a little, for I've only silent been so long, to give way to this course of fortune. By noting of the lady, I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions, to start into her face a thousand innocent chains. And angel whiteness beat away those blushes, and in her eye there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my readings, nor my observations, which, with experimental seal, doth warrant the tenor of my book. Trust not my age, my reverence, calling, nor divinity, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Friar, I cannot be. Canst thou see that all the grace that she hath left is not to add to her damnation a sin of perjury? She not denies it. Why seekest thou to cover with excuse that which appears in proper nakedness? Lady, which man is he you are accused of? They know that to accuse me, I know none. If I know more of any man alive than that which maiden modesty doth warrant, let all my sins lack mercy. Will my father prove you that any man conversed with me at hours unmeet, or that I maintain the change of words with any creature? Refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprison in the princess. Two of them have the very bent of honor. If their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lies in John the Bastard whose spirits toil in the frame of villainies. I know not. If what they say is true, these hands shall tear her. But if they wrong her honor, the proudest of them will hear of it. Time has not so dried up this blood of mine, nor age so ate up my invention, nor fortune made such havoc of my means, nor bad life so rent me a friends, but they will find awakening kind, both strength and limb and policy of mine, ability and means and choice of friends to quit me of them thoroughly. Pause a while. And let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince is left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in, and publish it that she is dead indeed. Maintain a mourning ostentation, and on your family's old monument hang mournful epitaphs, and do all rights that appertain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this well-carried child on her behalf takes slander to remorse. That is some good, but not for that dream, I on this strange course, but on this travail look for greater birth. She dying, as it must be maintained upon the instant she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. So will it fare with Claudio when he shall hear she died upon his words. The idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination. Then shall he mourn, if ever love had interest in his liver, and wish he had not so accused her. No, though he thought his accusation true. But of all aim, but this be level false, the supposition of the lady's death will quench the wonder of her infamy. And if it sort not well, you may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation in some reclusive and religious life, out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. For my part, you know that my inwardness and love is very much under the prince and Claudio. But by mine honor, I will deal in this as silently and justly as your soul should with your body. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Tis well contented, presently away, for two strange swords, strangely they strain to hear. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is not for long. Have patience and endure. You have no reason. I do it freely. <laughs> Truly, I believe your fair cousin is wronged. What might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It's a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. It's not that strange. Uh, as strange as the thing I know not? It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you. And yet believe me not. And yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I, I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. I do not swear and eat it. Oh, I will swear that you love me, and I will make him eat it who says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? No sauce that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. God forgive me. And what offense, sweet Beatrice? You have saved me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you 
with so much of my heart that there is none left to protest. Oh. <laughs> Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Atarius, you be I am gone though I am here. There is no love in you. I pray you let him go. But be it. Yes. think I will go. We will be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height a villain that has scorned, slandered, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man. Come, bear her in hand until they come to take hands and then with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh, God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Talk with a man out a window, a proper saying. Nay, but Beatrice. Sweet Nero, she is wrong. She is slandered. She is undone. Beatrice. Princes and counties. Surely a princely testimony. A sweet count, Count Comfect, a sweet gallant. Surely, oh, that I were a man for his sake. Or had any friend would be a man for my sake. <laughs> but manhood is melted into curtsies. Valor into compliment, and men are only turned into tongues and trim ones too. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing, therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Good Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul that Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand until I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say that she is dead, and so farewell. Is our whole assembly up here? Oh, a stool and a cushion for the sexton. Uh, Mary, that's a mine. And my partner. Nay, that's certain. We have the exhibition to examine. <clears throat> Which are the offenders that are to be accused? To let them come before Master Constable. Yea, Mary, let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Braccio. Pray, write down Braccio. <laughs> <laughs> and yours, Sirrah? I am a lady, sir. And my name is Conrad. Write down, Master Lady Conrad. Masters, do you serve God? Yea, yes, sir, we no. hope. Write down that they hope they serve God. <laughs> but write God first, for God defend, but God should go before such villains. <laughs> Masters, it is proved already that you are little better than false knaves, and it will be gone to be thought so shortly. How answer you for yourselves? Mary, sir, we say we are none. A marvelous, witty fellow, this one is. Uh, but I, I will go about with them. From you, sir, a word in your ear. <laughs> it is thought you are false knaves! I say to you, sir, we are none. Stand aside. Are they both in a tale? Have you heard out that they are none? Master Constable, if you go not the way to examine, you must call before the watch that are their accusers. A, Mary, that is the eftest way. Let the watch come forth. In the prince's name, accuse these men! This man did say that Don John, the prince's brother, 
was a villain. Oh, right on, Prince John a villain. Oh, just black perjury to call the prince's brother villain. Master oh, Consul. brainy fellow piece, I do not like thy look. I promise thee. Sir. <laughs> what heard you say him else? Mary, that he had received 1,000 ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Oh, flat burglary is ever was committed. Yeah, by mass that it is. <laughs> what else? And that, that Count Claudio did intend to shame Hero in front of the whole congregation and send her home without a husband. Oh, villain! Thou be condemned to everlasting redemption for this! <laughs> what else? This is all. And masters, this is more than you can deny. Prince John this morning secretly stolen away. Hero this morning accused and refused and upon this grave surely died. <gasps> Master Constable, let these men be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and take my examination. Come, let them be opinion. Let them be in the hands. Off, Coxcomb! Oh, God's my life, where's the <laughs> sense in having <laughs> right down the prince's officer, Coxcomb? Oh, come, find them. Thou naughty varlet. You are an ass. Oh! Oh! <laughs> God's my life, what? Where's the section to have her right me down? Uh, oh, but masters, forget not that I am it. Forget not that I am it. Oh, villain, thou art full of piety and shall be proved upon thee by a good witness. I am a wise fellow. Which is more, an officer. Which is more, a, a householder, I, a prettier piece as any in Messina. I'm, I'm one who knows the law, a go-to, and a rich fellow. Enough, and a fellow. We're at that losses. And one who had two gowns and everything handsome about him. Bring him away. Oh, that I be ripped down an ass! Thank <laughs> you.